documentary, there's that extraordinary footage of, uh, of the reaction from the German public. Um, when was it? 1956, the first time um, the, you know, the play was produced. Uh, um, was you present? Was Otto present? And could you expand upon? Uh, if um, I was present, the Otto. Yeah, Otto did no, 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 no nobody, nobody, nobody of the family went. There. At that time, I, I was not ready really to go to Germany at all. Um, I've been recently in Germany. I've been several times in Germany over the last 15 years, I would say. Um, now, um, in October, I've been in Germany in Frankfurt on the Oder. That's not the Frankfurt where Otto came from. It's um, near Berlin. It's on the Polish border. The Oder is a river. That's a border between Poland and Germany. You can go in Frankfurt, you can go over a bridge and you are in Poland without documentation. Just walk over. I did that because it's interesting to just walk over a border like that. And um, they did there a play about uh, my life, a new play in Germany. And um, it was shown in many schools and um, people were, kids were very interested. But um, just one little instant, a young man came after the play to me and said, do you hate me? And um, he was 19 years old. And I said, hate you? Why should I hate you? He said, well, because I'm German. And I said, well, are you guilty? Have you done anything against Jewish people? I mean, you were not even born. He said, yes, but I'm German and I do feel guilty. And then later we heard that he's a neo-Nazi. And, um, and those um, friends of him wanted him definitely to see the play. And you see, and I was thinking, because he thinks we hate him, he um, is on the defense and he becomes a neo-Nazi and attacks Jews again. <coughs> so we have to be very careful not to hate the new German generation, and I don't. Um, I've been many times not to Germany, like I said, I've been speaking to um, to many young people, and um, it's still there. The guilt feeling is still there, and um, it's it's difficult for the Germans. But I do know there are people, not only Jewish people, other people who would never go to Germany and still don't want to buy any German products. And um, mm -hmm. I went once to America near Chicago, and I was going to be picked up by somebody, and they phoned me up and said, "Would you mind?" if the person who picks you up um, has got a Mercedes. And I said, no, it, it's all right. But you know, people still think um, there is this hate uh, relationship. And that is really very, very dangerous. But if people feel hated, then they suffer and they can go on the defense and attack. But what did also make of this? You know, it's extraordinary footage. I've never seen anything. Yes. You know, Right. Well, Otto, Otto, he went to Frankfurt quite often. He had friends there still from old days. He went to visit people. And he was actually, he always said, I'm very proud to be a German. And I, at the time, couldn't understand. I said, but the Germans were criminals. And we had big discussions. And I was full of hatred. And he, he didn't. He said, well, of course, this was terrible. But he, he really believed that people are good at heart and they were misled. And just last question, these allegations that he made the art and, 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 and this letter he, he, he received or these letters to him with all this hatred and calling him, you know, making money off him, the courts of his daughter. Many, he had many letters about um, the diary being a fake. And um, he always started court cases against those people. Very often they were teachers, but it never came to anything. They moved then to a different part of Germany, or they got ill, or whatever. Never. And um, he even started a court case um, against David Irwin, because he has well denied the uh, authenticity of the diary. And with the board of Jewish deputies, um, they said, we'll help you to the court case against him. But it was in 1979. And he was ill already at the time. And he died in 1980. And so nothing came about this court case. One more question? Um, I'm just curious why it was that you go 
to model the work is he had some family, right? He had to return to Amsterdam, where you know, there's so many good memories and not a lot of people. Why, why, he, why did he return to Basel? I mean, why did he return to Basel? Why he went to live in Basel? He had never lived in Basel before. No. no. no, no the question is why, instead of returning, going to Basel, where he had his mother and he had some relatives, why he, after the war, why he came back to Amsterdam? Why did he go to Amsterdam? Oh, why he went back to Amsterdam? Family. Well, um, you know, we too went back to Amsterdam because first he hoped that his girls would still come back and then he wanted to um, get his business going again because all those people who had helped him um, needed a job, an occupation, and um, suddenly he, he became Dutch then, he wasn't Dutch before. And you know, uh, um, after Otto died, my mother was in Basel still, and we lived in England. And um, we said, well, come and live with us, you know, why do you stay in Basel? And said, well, I've been so happy here with my husband, um, I've got so many memories and so on, and she stayed in Basel, and then she came to England, and they went backwards and forwards. You know, he lived there with his family, um, he had his memories. Um, it was difficult to give it up, and he had a house after all. Once he lived in Basel, they went every month for a week to Amsterdam to see that the house was going properly, to see the visitors, and so he was still very, very much involved in in, in Holland. And then, of course, his mother died. And um, so, you know, but she stayed in Switzerland anyway. Okay, on behalf of everyone here at the uh, Center for Jewish Life, we would just like to take this opportunity to thank Mrs. Ella Schloss for the privilege of hosting the premiere of the film Otto Frank and for being with us here tonight. We thank you very much. So it's the very first time it's been shown in England. Yeah. So you are the you first are. to so, see so it. So you're doing it tonight as part of history. You'll be telling your children about this. No doubt. Um, we have with us tonight the, uh, an opportunity to buy, purchase the book, Ever, Ever's story, Ever Schloss, signed and also the second book, The Promise by Eva Schloss. So again, this is an opportunity for everyone here tonight. Again, the Center for Jewish Life hosts many, many activities, events. If you're on our email list, you'll receive periodically updates of all the exciting events of a range of activities. We thank you very much for coming here tonight. And we wish you a happy Hanukkah. And on that note, I want to say that we have outside, as you go out, there is a packet Manura candles, take the Manura, light up the night. The story, I think, more than anything else, is about, as so brilliantly put by a young child who sees things more clearly than we do as adults. There is good inside every single human being. The story of Kanaka is there is light inside even the darkest moments. Happy Kanaka, and we thank you very much for coming. Thank you.